The Northern Territory, you're probably thinking crocodiles or rugged cowboys roping cattle. You should be thinking about Darwin, a modern, vibrant, tropical city with an economy backed by resource-driven growth. Let me give you the quick tour. Darwin is the last frontier, but it's also the newest. Darwin is a modern cosmopolitan city set on a magnificent harbour that's six times the size of Sydney's. Relax at the Darwin waterfront, ride the surf in the Wave Lagoon, grab a meal at the famous Mindle Beach markets. Thousands gather to watch the sunset every Thursday and Sunday. This economic dynamo is the hub of tourism, nightlife, entertainment and shopping. And did I mention the fishing? The top end has some of Australia's best fishing. Just an hour or two from Darwin, you could be in the chase for a metre long barra. We're close to spectacular National Park. World Heritage listed Kakadu is nearby. Thousands of years of indigenous culture are here at your doorstep. It's a fantastic lifestyle in a city with barely more than 120,000 Territorians. Now that mightn't seem a lot, but it is Australia's northernmost capital, about the size of a Melbourne or Sydney suburb, but with all the good stuff. An excellent hospital and another one on the way. Modern schools and a university. Great sporting facilities. We love our AFL and motorsport. There's a casino. The very popular Darwin Cup race meeting. Magnificent botanic gardens. We even have our own symphony orchestra. Now Darwin is an administrative centre for government. It's home to Army, Navy and Air Force deployments and the gateway to Asia with direct flights to Bali, Singapore, Ho Chi Minh City and Manila. And we're developing quickly. Huge oil and gas discoveries off the northern coast and a fast growing population are driving government and private infrastructure investment. The NT government redeveloped the waterfront precinct to include an international standard convention centre. Behind me, the ConocoPhillips LNG plant. To my right, Bladen Point. Impex, a Japanese company, has chosen Darwin as the site for its $30 billion LNG processing facility. OK, so let's do a quick rewind. We've got a great tropical lifestyle, a pristine environment, modern facilities, and we're on the verge of an oil and gas boom. What more could you want? How about confidence? Let's hear what our Chief Minister, Paul Henderson, has to say. Darwin is one of Australia's greatest hidden secrets. We are a truly multicultural city that looks north to Asia and not south to the rest of Australia, with a lifestyle that is second to none. And with the massive oil and gas developments that are happening in the Timor Sea and to the northwest of us, Darwin's time has truly come. We are on the verge of a massive gas LNG boom here in Darwin, which is going to underpin our economy for the next 40 to 50 years. Now is the time to invest in Darwin. The future has never looked brighter and you will be welcomed with a smile. This is truly a unique place in the rest of Australia and you'll be proud to invest in Darwin and call Darwin your home. When you ask a local why they live in Darwin, you'll probably find they came here for a holiday, for a week, for a month, and they're still here, 10, 20, even 40 years on. It's a great lifestyle here in Darwin, in Australia's top end. I hope that you decide to come and join us soon. And now I'd like to hand over to somebody equally as passionate about Darwin and the top end, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jim Downs. G'day Jim. So what do you do in Darwin? Oh, good day, Wayne. It's good to see you, by the way. I love doing things with, uh, with the famous Wayne Zerby. Mate, what I do in Darwin is basically work for Gwello Developments, and uh, my job is to coordinate all of the sales that happen in the Gwello buildings. So uh, things like getting floor plans together, the price lists, and uh, making sure all of our agents who help us sell our product in China or uh, you know, down south in Australia have all of the information that their buyers and investors need, and also helping all of the local people buy uh, Gwello property as well. Now, Gwello, as we know, is one of our big developers, but how long have they been around, Jim? 
Oh, gee, Wayne, I think uh, Evan first came to Darwin in about 1975, and he got really serious about building in about 1980. Uh, that was when he started to do some of the bigger projects. Um, most of his projects have been in an area just around us. We're filming this in the, the CBD of Darwin. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, he's, he's been around for a long time and probably built half of Darwin, the truth be known. You mention a lot of buildings, Jim, most of which are in the CBD. Is that part of a plan? Oh, Wayne, well, the way, if, if we look at building buildings that are going to be successful for our buyers, and by successful, I mean, are they going to go up in value over time? I, I mean, if you buy real estate, wouldn't one of your goals be that it goes up in value over time? Of course. So if you look at globally, or, or any city that you like to think of, Brisbane, you know, Sydney, Melbourne, Paris, London, Where's the most expensive real estate? Is it in the CBD or is it way out in the boondocks on the outskirts of town? And the answer is probably CBD. Would always. That, always. The so CBD. It, it has been a plan of Evans. If we're going to build buildings, um, especially in a town of, uh, like Darwin, we want our, our customers to actually make money out of the transaction. So it has been a plan and a, and a bit of a uh, desire of Evans to, um, to make the property that we build go up in value for our investors. Jim, we know Darwin is a boom town, but do people overseas and down south know exactly what's here and where we are and why we are so special? No, Wayne, they don't. So I, I find, uh, in fact, I was down uh, south doing a seminar in Melbourne, I think it was uh, just before Christmas, and uh, I had to put a map of Australia up because I asked the question, where's Darwin? And someone said, is that near Cairns? And it was a bit of a shock to me, I have to, <laughs> I have to tell you. So, mate, we do want to educate people on where Darwin is and where the Northern Territory is and just how great a destination it is. Because you're not just talking about Darwin now, you're talking about Darwin over the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, mm. as you know. Yeah. Well, does that make Darwin a good investment? Well, it does, but it, you've got to look, if I look at investments, I, I look at things like infrastructure growth, I look for things like um, employment opportunities, I look for population growth. So whenever I'm looking as a, a private investor, which I am, if I'm looking for areas that are going to grow, do they have all of these things, infrastructure, employment, population growth? And I think Darwin's got that if you look at what's happening around Darwin now, we're filming this in 2013, and uh, we have all of those ingredients in abundance, Wayne. Mm. Jim, over the last decade, there has been a lot of ups and downs around the world. How has Darwin property fared? Wayne, Darwin would have fared pretty well. And let me expand on that. A few ideas that I'd like to share with everyone. If you look at what's happened in the world for the last 30 years, you'd have to agree, we've had a few ups and downs. We've had war in Iraq, war in Iran, you've had devalued Australian dollar, you've had the Fukushima disaster, you've had meltdowns of Asian economies. Um, you know, uh, the, Mayan, the Mayan people, remember we were all gonna yeah. December 21? What about Y2K back in the year 2000? Remember all the planes were going to crash out of the sky and all the computers were going to crash? Hmm. So all of that's happened over the last 30 years. And if you'd been an investor, and I'll give you a specific example. Do you remember those blocks of land we had the house and land packages out in Palmerston we were selling in 1980 for about $50,000? Yeah, well, I do remember. What would they be worth today? Today, anywhere between 580, 650, something like that. So if, if you'd met Guello, in 1980 and bought one, two or three of those, would you be a happy camper right now? Jim, there's every chance that I wouldn't be sitting here working, <laughs> talking to you right now. Exactly that. So with all of those bad things happening, the, the getting back to the safety question, which I think is important for most of our interstate or overseas investors, all of those bad things have happened and yet little Darwin, with its growth in its oil and gas, with its growth in marine supply and growth in the American troops, all of those things put together have taken us on a journey where I did figures recently where they, uh, Darwin's average growth with Guello property, not the bigger market, just mm -hmm. our property, averaged 9%. Now that'll double your money every eight years. So that's why it's gone, if you, any of you out there want to get a calculator, from 50 up to say 570 to 600. Mm. And that's how the figures work out. So I think that's a, a really good uh, point that we've brought here, that no matter what happens in the world, Darwin seems to be this little cocoon of wealth. And it's just driven by different, different things than the rest of Australia, and in fact the rest of the world is driven by. So that's why I guess I'm, I'm so bullish on Darwin. So Jim, give me 10 good reasons why Darwin is a good investment. Gosh, 10. Okay, 10. Okay, well, for a start, we are the port to Asia. 
Mm -hmm. So we have a, a massive opportunity here to, um, for the rest of Australia to use Darwin. We are the closest port to Asia, which geographically makes, makes us a, a, a really good place for businesses down south to export out. Um, let's look for local things. We have uh, a, a large harbour, which gives us the opportunity to be that major port. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might underestimate that, but uh, having a large harbour is a really great thing to do because that will help us build more industry in Darwin, which will help us bring more people to town who can rent and buy our properties. We've got, um, I'd suggest, the, a large convention centre that we've just built recently. Mm -hmm. That was about a billion dollar project down with the waterfront there. We've got the, um, uh, a young, well-paid population being yep. driven into Darwin. We've got, um, we're, we're, we're a capital city. Mm. So that's a, a rare thing. If you look at a capital city anywhere else in Australia compared to a regional centre, we have both federal and uh, local government. So we have a huge uh, base for uh, public servants, all of which need somewhere to live and yep. somewhere to buy, tenants. We've got a huge um, Navy, Army, um, Air Force contingent in Darwin as we are the, the northern command post for mm. Australia. Um, so we've got to protect our asset um, as we grow our mm. oil and gas industry over in the, uh, the north and west of us. Where um, oh, pastoral industry would be another one. We've just uh, in the process of building a half a billion dollar uh, meatworks out there, which will uh, take over a lot of the live export that we've been doing through Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Doing a lot of work with them to get that right. So. Um, uh, we can get that live cattle industry back up that's acceptable to the Australian population. Mm -hmm. So that's a major part of that. Um, so you're banning pretty well. We've got about another three to go, Jim. Three to go, Wayne. Um, give me a hint. Well, we are the centre for government. Well, we are. As I said, um, uh, that national and, and federal uh, limit brings a huge amount of uh, work. Just the, the federal budget last year in Darwin, for, or in the Northern Territory, for military was $1.7 billion. You've got to remember we're only 220,000 people in the Northern Territory. Mm. That's a big budget to bring in just for defence alone. Jim, we do have the military here in force with the three services, but there's an extension to that, isn't oh, there? Wayne, it's, we're really excited. Or Some people are excited and some people aren't, but I'm one of the excited ones. We have um, Barack Obama, of course, the US President, came to Darwin last year yep. and uh, made an announcement that they were going to bring um, up to 2,500 troops rotating through uh, the Darwin region for training. And uh, that's already started. I think, uh, from memory, we've got about 200 in town right now. Yes, yep. And that'll grow to about 2,500 over the next few years. There's a uh, massive 53 hectare site uh, just out near the Robinson Barracks, which is not far out of Darwin, mm -hmm. and uh, that's being built as we uh, as we currently speak. So that'll be the spearhead, I think, of a of a much larger uh, situation over the next five, 10, 15 years. Okay, nine down, one to go, Jim. Oh, one to go. I'd suggest the mining exploration. Yeah. With what's happening in Darwin, we're a uh, a major uh, centre now for mining exploration, because Darwin is is pivotal in its position for the northwest shelf, what they call the Browse Basin, um, all of that oil and gas discoveries offshore, and also a major port um, and a major uh, region for bringing in, looking at what's onshore in Darwin. And uh, that's a major industry. I, I think from memory there was about just over $300 million spent last year on exploration of the Northern Territory onshore, disregarding offshore. So that's a major industry for Darwin. Yeah, it's a million bucks a day just about, isn't it? A million it? bucks a day. I never thought about it like that, but it's a good way to think about it. Yeah. So when you say mining, do we mean oil and gas? I, I, oil and gas is the one that gets all the glamour mm -hmm. to it. It's the impexes, the $34 billion and that. But um, what we've got to understand is that there's two... In Darwin, we have offshore and onshore. Now, offshore, the bad news for us is all of these billions are being spent around the, uh, the ocean around us and making these major fines, but all of that money goes back to the federal government. Mm -hmm. So we in Darwin, we like the onshore. Now, currently, uh, just from what's been discovered, uh, Wayne, there's about five times more oil and gas onshore than what's been discovered offshore. Now, remember, 
if that all gets developed, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you a few of those in a minute, but if that gets developed, the NT government gets to keep all of the income from that. Mm. And it's pretty large. Now, what about the IMPEX project? That means a lot to us. Well, that's the one that's getting the glamour, as I mm. said. So it is a huge project. It's a, a field that's been found uh, out in the Browse Basin. It's about 880 kilometres to the west of us. Yep. Uh, they're building a pipeline into Darwin. That's about a $10 billion project in itself. Then there's the onshore component which is the other, you know, 15 to 20 billion to build mm -hmm. that. And that's a major um, infrastructure process. That, that gas has been sold to the Japanese government um, before it's even been mined, and it'll, it'll be operational for the next 40 years. So, Jim, does that mean there's more out there? Oh, very much. We've, um, the Poseidon's probably the next biggest one mm -hmm. um, that's out there. That's a, uh, uh, another deal where that's a site that's been found just to the south of the Ecthys plant. And uh, that will be piped into Darwin, into the Conoco Phillips plant, and that's another pipeline contract there. And we're talking, you know, billions and billions to build that. Uh, there's also the Shell uh, Prelude floating platform, which for a very short time will be the largest floating thing on the planet. And uh, that's being built up in the Mitsubishi plant in Korea right now. Mm -hmm. That'll be towed down within the next two years. And it's so big, they'll be able to process all of their gas there and ship it actually off the platform. It's amazing. Yeah. So what does onshore mining look like? Well, onshore mining um, is different. In Queensland, they have um, on, you know, onshore mining as well. They call it fracking gas and all okay. that over there. But we don't, have to, we don't have the problem that Queensland's got of the Artesian Basin. So if we looked at just the Beetaloo Basin, which is one of the largest finds onshore, um, to put it in perspective, IMPEX is 13.8 trillion cubic feet of gas and the Hess, the Beetaloo Basin, the current uh, discoveries down there are 64 trillion cubic feet of gas. That's like f three or four times bigger than IMPEX and 18 billion barrels of oil wine. So, and that will all be shipped out of the port of Darwin. So when you look at onshore, it's much easier to mine, it's much safer, there's no storms, mm. and we get to keep the money. They're amazing logistics, aren't they? Oh, when you I, stop I, and think about I, it. You wonder why I get so passionate about Darwin, Wayne. It's, um, the, what's happening around us over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, if, if I was a younger man and my children were younger, they'd all be getting trained up in, in uh, apprenticeships that could work on the oil and gas fields. Yeah, I kind of wish I was another 40 <laughs> years younger as we go, Jim. <laughs> we both need that. So what's the size of some of the other onshore fines? Well, I just mentioned the Beetaloo mm -hmm. and that at, at 64 billion and 18 billion barrels of oil. We've just found one down Santos, or we, I sound funny. Uh, Santos has just found one down there, which is 372 billion barrels of oil. Where is that? That's just uh, to the west of uh, Alice, northwest of Alice Springs. There's another one, Armour Energy down there, have found, which has got 40 trillion uh, cubic feet of gas, and that's uh, not far from uh, just south of Catherine. So, you know, we're talking areas that aren't hard to mine, that are very near the, uh, the central rail link, so all mm. of their um, produce can be just gassed up uh, and pipelined up through the, Darwin, uh, through the port of Darwin. So that's where all this, it will go out of here, out of Darwin? Oh, very much, because if you look at logistically again, if they send it down to Wyala, which would be the next nearest port in South Australia, it takes a ship about oh, 11 days to get down to Adelaide, and back, or Wyala, and back from the northern parts of Australia. So Darwin's strategically located that they'll send all of that, um, we'll call it, you know, oil and gas, up through the port of Darwin. So Jim, how will they service and supply the offshore platform? It, it's a huge problem. And what, what we've done um, in the NT to solve that problem is we've looked abroad, and if you look at uh, Aberdeen, mm -hmm. or everyone would be familiar with the North Sea oil that got in, found in the North Sea about 30 years ago. So Norway got the oil, but Scotland, very short space away, there's the crow flies from yep. the North Sea wells, um, missed out. So the Scots being canny little, you know, buggers that they are, th thought that, you know what we'll do, we're gonna supply all of the food, all of the, uh, the pots and pans, all of the workers, all of the medical supplies, everything that they need. And it was funny, I was talking to the mayor of um, Aberdeen and uh, who is going to, be, an Aberdeen company is going to be running our supply base, yep. which I'll get to in two seconds. But he told me an interesting story. He said, Jim, the Norwegians got the oil and gas. So he said, we likened that in Scotland that 
in the 1840s gold rush, who made the money out of the gold? The guys who were panning for it or the guys who sold them the picks and shovels? And the answer is, of course, the guys who sold them the picks and shovels. Mm. So while Norway got the oil, Aberdeen or Scotland got the ability to supply all these guys with the tools they needed to mine the oil. And it, that's what the marine supply base will do. Interesting, isn't it? That's a parallel between the Chinese in Pine Creek. Yes. They, of course, supplied yeah. and prospered. Yeah. It's an old, it's an old formula, but it works, Wayne. Mm. It's yeah. a great story so far, isn't it? <laughs> Who's running that and what do they do? Well, Wayne, the, the company that's running it is called the uh, ASCO, and they're a large company in uh, Aberdeen in Scotland that's been doing that North Sea oil for about 30 years. And what their job is to supply everything that is needed to all of the offshore and onshore plants for the oil and gas. So, for instance, if they need staff or spare parts or food, medical, everything, as I said, will get shipped out to them from the marine supply base. And absolute huge industry. Mm. It's, I believe that that one service alone will be the future of Darwin. Mm. So it's all about oil and gas, but it's all about the things that go with oil and gas. Oh, it's, it's extraordinary. Everyone thinks that after the construction's finished, everyone leaves. That's when the whole money starts. Yeah. That's when Darwin really starts to burn. That's when and that'll be finished in about 2016. Yeah, she was. And that's yeah. a matter of months away. Oh, yes. When you stop and think yeah. about it. Yeah. It's terrific. Jim, what's happening with the American Marines? Well, as I said before, there's a major base being built out for them in uh, just near Robertson. Uh, I mentioned 53 hectares. Which, of course, is Palmerston. Which, of course, is near Palmerston, Wayne, which is the love of your life. But, um, no, that, that's a long-term thing. We, we've got to look at... Um, at logistically where Darwin is in the what they see as the South Pacific region. And again, um, Darwin is strategically placed between India, China and all of the areas. So if America needed a friend in Australia, Darwin is fantastically placed to be the ultimate, you know, repositioning depot for the marine base in Australia. And interestingly enough, the Marines that have come here have fitted in beautifully into they our have. community. They have. They've Did been... you see them on Anzac Day? They yeah. were fantastic. Uh, just a great asset great for us. Great asset for us. Jim, you've answered all the questions beautifully. I think I'm convinced, but tell me one more time, yeah. why is Darwin a good place to invest? Well, I think we've got to bring safety into it. So if I was in China or down south and I was looking at Darwin or, or any investment opportunity, yep. Probably my long, the safety of that long-term investment would be one of my prime con controls. So the way I see Darwin is if you look at anywhere else in Australia, and I'm not taking anything away from Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide or, or the South East Queensland, um, but what I am saying is that I doubt very much if any of those cities could put up on a board like we've done mm -hmm. um, at our talks that we do and show that much infrastructure. If you look at... Um, Martin Ferguson, who's our Federal Labor Minister for major projects, and his figure is $240 billion. When I talk to the local guys in our infrastructure capability network, which is a, a small part of the NT government, they put a figure of $174 billion on it. Now, that infrastructure spend on a town that only has 120 to 130,000 people must have a dramatic impact. So if, imagine if we went down to Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane and mm -hmm. dropped $175 billion right in their doorstep. Do you think that might make a difference to their property values? I think it just might, I think Jim. it just might. So, I think it just might. But if you might. take that, it's not just a once-only dip, Wayne. If you look at the, the progression of industry that's coming to Darwin, um, you know, look at all of our onshore, look at all of our offshore mining, look at the marine base, look at the marines from America. Yep. All of those things aren't happening tomorrow. They've started now, but they'll be in production here for the next 5, 10, 15 years, as you know. Mm. And, you know, production of those facilities will go on for the next, you know, half a century. Yeah. So we have a pipeline of product that's coming on to supply us with highly paid tenants and highly paid people who can afford to buy our property. And the great thing, Jim, is in 50 years' time, you and I will still be able to do all this. My hair will be as grey as your one. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Let's pretend I'm from down south or I'm from someplace overseas. Yeah. Tell me again, is Darwin a safe place to invest? Well, as I just said, I, I can't see anywhere else in Australia, certainly, that's got the potential that Darwin has over the next decade, two, three or four. So I'm, I'm passionate, I know, but I hope that the people that are watching this are getting the idea that Darwin's just not a one-trick pony, Wayne. It's got a huge amount of infrastructure, employment, 
and uh, uh, opportunities here for, for all of Australia. I don't know why everyone's not moving up here, Wayne. Let's keep it our secret. Let's keep it, Let's our keep secret. it a bit of a secret, Jim. A bit Jim. of a secret, yeah. Okay, rolling the wheel back to where we started with Grello. What are some of the major projects for you guys? Oh, it's very exciting now, Wayne. We've just um, finished uh, selling the first building that we've released uh, this last year. Mm -hmm. That was the Soho development. It's a 30-storey development right in the CBD. It uh, comprises one and two bedroom apartments and uh, all of those have been sold. The next one we're putting on is the Ritz. Uh, again, CBD. Mm -hmm. That'll be a 32-storey tower. Again, ones and two bedders. The price range in that we're hoping will be between about 330 up to about 600. The rents on those, by the way, would be in the order of a minimum of 6%. So, for instance, if you bought the penthouse at 600,000, your rent minimum would be uh, about six, uh, 700 a week. That's, you can't, again, replicate that anywhere down south. Mm. Our yields in Darwin now, the investors who understand what I'm talking about uh, with yield, would be approaching 6.5% to 7%. No other city in Australia has done that. Fantastic. So, so. after the Ritz, we've got um, Daly and McMinn Street, mm -hmm. which again, two 30-storey towers, again CBD. And that is called the Gateway because it is the... It is the Gateway. It's the Gateway. Yeah. And after that, probably the next one we do would be the Chin Building, where we are here, which is again what, 100 metres from the CBD of the actual CBD of Darwin. And again, looking probably a 30-storey tower again, um, mainly one and two bedroom residential. Yeah. This is a famous old building. Would you yeah. keep the famous old building? Oh, very much, Wayne. We're going to a lot of trouble to keep the, the old building, which goes way back to the Chinese sector yeah. of Darwin. And uh, this will be glamorous. We'll take it all back to the original stone. And this will be the foyer of the building that we're going to build here. Mm. Now, one of yeah. the most exciting uh, projects that you guys have underway at the moment, exciting for us in Palmerston and yeah. also for our rural friends, Coolalinga. Tell us oh, about that. I'd nearly forgotten Coolalinga, but I have. But it's a marvellous site. We're building a, or uh, well, the, the first stage will be a 20,000 square metre shopping centre, yep. uh, which will include, I think, at this stage, about 50 specialty shops. We've got Coles, Kmart signed up, uh, McDonald's. Uh, Red Rooster, KFC, all of the normals. Mm -hmm. Interesting to note, we had only 50 shops in stage one available to be uh, rented and we had over 150 applications. Isn't that staggering? It is fantastic. Yeah. There's also a uh, seven storey building as well. Well, we're looking at that. We haven't had that passed by council yet, but we have been approached um, to put office blocks out there and that would go on top of the existing shopping centre. And not only that, we've got a, a large land division out the uh, subdivision at the back of the shopping centre where we had 19 blocks where I released them at about 8 o'clock one morning and they were all sold by 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's, all to local builders too. Yeah, which was really fantastic. Good to see. Yeah. So it would seem that over the next decade, Darwin would be a fairly safe bet if you're an investor. Would that be right, Jim? Oh, I think you're talking to the converted one, but I would have to agree with you. I just think if we look at the, the assets that I'm after, if I'm an investor from down south or overseas, I'd be looking at safety would be num my number one bet. So if we can prove to you that Darwin is a, a safe bet for the growth of Darwin as a coming from a regional city mm -hmm. to a global um, gas and oil hub of global significance. And I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. That's in government documents where they're calling us the the Singapore of the future. Then if I was going to look at where are my tenants going to come from, can I resell my property in one, two, five, ten years, and we always look at ten year cycles as a minimum as an investor, where is my buyer going to come from? Mm -hmm. Well, we look at a burgeoning uh, population growth, and as you know, reading the government documents as I do, we're expecting another, say, 70,000 families to move to Darwin over the next two decades, and it begs the question, where are they going to live? And if you want to live in the CBD of Darwin, as you and I know, Wayne, we're surrounded by water on all sides. We're like a little island. Mm. So we have what's called scarcity of product. Mm. So you can't build any more of Darwin CBD. What are we, 10 blocks long and four blocks wide? Sounds so, fantastic, Jim. Um, yeah. The last question, um, where do I sign? <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Appreciate it.